Welcome to the Bridge Church Online Service. We are excited to have you here with us this morning. We want to uh, just encourage you uh, through the Word, through the Gospel. We're using this uh, platform to do that, but we want to ask you to give us a like, share the video. There are plenty of people out there that may want to see this um, or may just need to hear Jesus, and we can use you. You have a a part to play here, and you can actually share this video, and others can see that as well. We're going to go into worship, and I want to encourage you. I want to uh, just invite you to join us. We are going to be worshiping and celebrating the one true king, our one creator, uh, God of the whole universe. And I want to encourage you just to take a few moments with us to take that into consideration and just be in that presence of God, dwell in him and worship with us today. Christ is my reward and all of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world I could ever satisfy. Through every trial, my soul will sing, no turning back. I've been sad. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for uh, joining us this morning. Please like, share, and comment in the description in the comment boxes below. You guys knew what I was talking about. But um, thank you again for being here. Let me pray 
for us real quick before we get into this next song. Father God, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for giving us the breath of life to log on and to hear your word preached by Daniel. And um, may you illuminate something new in our hearts. If this is a story we've heard or a part of scripture that we've heard, may you uh, make it new for our hearts and for our, our spirits. But also, Father, I just want to thank you for everybody watching at home. I pray a prayer of safety and health over them. I pray that also you would just continue to pour into us through this worship. Guide us. Let us be vessels um, in, in, in helping usher these people and the, our family, our congregation into your throne room. And I just pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus He didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought heaven down Sin was great, love was greater What could say? name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Good morning, Bridge Church. We're here today with a very special interview um, with the legendary Stefan. You guys know him as he leads worship every single week for us. And uh, just to let you guys know who stepped up a couple years ago for us. And, um, you know, just he's been faithful ever since. And so, uh, but one thing that maybe you didn't know unless you were really close to him is Stefan has really had a dream 
and a passion of his um, that is really coming to fruition. And God's kind of been opening some doors and stirring his heart. And so we want to bring this before you. So we as a church, because we believe we're a family, we're in this thing together. And so uh, we want to come together and just uh, hear what uh, his journey and where he's at now and what the next steps in his journey are going to be. And so, Stefan? Um, yay. Um, yeah, so I'm actually going to be leaving to pursue my dream of screenwriting in um, L.A. So I know there's a, there's a, a lot of uh, big risks out there, but, <laughs> you know, I'm a firm believer. We all get a few big risks that are thrown our way, and, um, uh, you know, it's like uh, our, our choices in our life is... Kinda, kinda. I don't want to say depend on that, but or like are, are changed by that. that. Our lives are changed by the risks we take and the ones that we don't. Mm. And I feel like God is calling me to take this risk. So mm. that's exciting. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I think it, it'll be it'll be a cool experience. Um, uh, I'll be leaving in August. Should I say that? Yeah. So August. So he will be here <laughs> through the month of July. Uh, so he's going to be here with us. So he's not leaving like right now. We got another month or five or so weeks that we're going to walk alongside of him as a family. So, uh, Stefan, if we as a church were praying for you, what would you think would be some like top things that we could really lean in and pray for you about? I'd, I'd say the biggest thing um, that I would ask for in prayer is just uh, whew, a few things. The biggest being uh, just my convictions, because L.A. is can be a very uh, um, toxic place for those who aren't ready for that environment. And um, I don't want to compromise my morals uh, by going there. And so just, just pray that I'll stay on guard, but also that the Lord will just light up paths to the people that I need to meet um, to be successful in the career path I'm, I'm taking. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's incredibly exciting. I mean, I can remember us feeling the urge to plant this church and you're getting ready to move and all the pieces that have to come into play, which can be scary and also exciting. And it's like this tornado of emotions that are just rolling around. So uh, we as a church, we're going to be praying for that. Um, we believe in you. We believe God has a plan for you. Um, I'm excited to see what he does in this next um, chapter of your life. Uh, one thing, church, that you would for you to know is um, he's setting up or uh, is in the process of putting some pieces together uh, because we believe we want to be a church that also sends people out. Like, uh, you know, for him to be a light into the community in L.A. that God's going to use him there uh, for ministry. And he has some other gifts, as you can see, uh, video work. And uh, he can obviously add a lot to the body of Christ. And so uh, he's going to be setting up a GoFundMe. So maybe you feel led uh, to, you know, to help him in this next step, this next journey with uh, different things of moving as he continues just to follow the dream that God's placed in his heart. And so uh, we're going to lean in and pray together as a church over the next few weeks. Find some time um, over the next couple of weeks. Maybe you want to reach out to him. Um, we are uh, putting some plans together to where uh, we should see each other face to face plenty of times before that. So make some time. Maybe you want to hear a little bit about where he's going and what's going on. Uh, but I would just encourage you as we uh, get to lean into this, because I, I know for me, uh, Stefan and I have grown a little bit closer. So I appreciate you you. I, I can't thank you enough for just the uh, everything you've poured into the Bridge Church, and it, it's been an incredible experience to see how God's used you um, over these past couple years, and we're going to continue to pray about what the next chapter looks like. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to lean in, and uh, we're going to continue to worship through the Word of God. In the beginning, darkness covered the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. The true light, which gives light to everyone, came into the world. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness cannot overcome it. It is a light for the lost, the searching and the seeking. A light for the darkest valley, 
a light to drive out fear, even in the shadow of death. When we believe in the light, we become children of the light. It shines in us, through us. If we walk in the light, if we let it shine before others, we become a city on a hill, the light of the world. When we let his word light our path, others will follow. We become a beacon of hope to a world in darkness. Our lives reflect the glory of his resurrection. He makes us a light for the nations, so his salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Let there be light. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Bridge Church, how are you this Sunday morning? We are jumping in. I hope you listened. If you didn't listen last week, I encourage you to go back and listen to the Father's Day message that Jordan Keeter spoke. Uh, I, I just love the word, his, his real vulnerability, and just how God has radically changed his life. Uh, but today, uh, we are getting ready to, I, I'm preaching what in the preacher world we call a standalone. So it's not a part of a series. I just began to pray and ask God, what do you want me to speak on? And I had read this text in my devotion time, maybe like two weeks ago. And it uh, is such a powerful text. It's a pretty popular text. But um, as I read it and the season we're in, I, I honestly I went back and I read it like five or six times, almost like every day. And it just lifted my spirits and encouraged me so much. Uh, but we're going to be in John chapter one today, John chapter one. So if you have that or something new we're doing, you can go on your version app, click on events and find uh, our notes and the message scripture in there, too. Uh, you can do that or John chapter one, verses one through 14 today. I'll be there in just a minute, but John chapter 1, that's our main base text. I got some supporting text in there uh, that we'll see here in just a minute. But before I jump in, I just wanted to say this. I had this on my heart as I was thinking through and praying this. I, I, a couple things I wanted to say is, one is that you have been so resilient during this time. I mean, this is unprecedented times that we are in and that we have already walked through uh, to realize that the church is not just a building, but the body of Christ. And I love you and thank you so much for your flexibility, for your willingness to just wear so many different hats. And I've seen so many people in our church just really step up and say, you know what, I, I don't have a title. I'm just here to serve. What do you need? What can I help with? And I, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because there's, there's no matter what part you play, it's been a huge part in seeing people come to know Christ, seeing people take steps of faith and just serving and loving on our community as we have all had to be just incredibly flexible. So thank you for your willingness to serve and love and encourage each other during this time. And I, I, I just, I'm blown away at your generosity with your time talent and resources and and so I just thank you for that. And I hope that we can come in and just see that. I believe that uh, God is doing something during this time. And he's even stirring our hearts and souls for what is next. And I cannot wait for that. Uh, so, so thank you. I, I say that again. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm honored to serve next to you and what God is doing in this season. So uh, I want to pray for us. And then we're going to jump into this message today. Okay, so let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for your truth. God, thank you for everything that you are doing in and through this church, God. Thank you for the people that you have brought together at the right time, at the right place. God, and I just pray that you just speak to our hearts today. God, I pray that I will decrease so that you may increase. God, I pray that you stir our souls, stir our hearts for the faith steps that you're calling us to take, God. I pray that we remember whose we are, remember who we are following. God, and I pray all of this in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... 
Amen. Hope you get a comment on there. Um, a like those hearts. You guys have been really engaged. Maybe you want to post something in here uh, that's speaking to you as well. I, I love to read those comments with you in and through this. But I've entitled this message, if you're taking notes, I'll have some uh, things for you to write down. But the title is, It's All About the Who. It's all about the who. And as I begin to reflect on that statement, and think about how just one person, one person can bring a spark to a situation, to a movement, to what is happening. You can look back in all throughout history and see how one person maybe rose up and, and believed in something and saw something great begin to stir and to happen. I was reminded of this recently when we were all kind of uh, COVID and locked in quarantine not, and all the sports were canceled and uh, this documentary about about the Chicago Bulls came out and about Michael Jordan and just seeing his tenacity and and what really just blew me away is how that one man Michael Jordan went into the league not only changed the team and the franchise but he changed sports forever I mean things are done differently in the sports arena and with outside organizations since he has been and played basketball and how that one who changed everything I mean think about large corporations and companies, or maybe if you own your own company, whenever you hire someone, you interview them because the who is important. You want to know about their skills, about their mindset, about what kind of culture they're used to, all these different things and what they bring to the table because the who matters. The who is a big deal. And today we see this text because as we look in the book of John, as I was talking about, I love the book of John and I love it because one, John repeatedly says over and over, I'm the one, I'm the beloved disciple. I'm the one whom Jesus loves. And he says that a lot through this. And, but John starts out different than all the other gospels. And you, Matthew, or you see Matthew and Luke, they kind of start in the genealogy in the beginning of Jesus his earthly life, but John sets up and makes sure that we know who we are worshiping. We make sure we know who we are following. John really dives into this concept of the deity and the power and the grace of who Jesus is. Is And I love this, and this is so vital for you and I today to really grasp this, to really understand this, because there can be times, and, and for even for me during this season of moments of discouragement, moments of fear where it feels like the world is spinning and I, I don't know how to almost like a, when a car gets stuck in the mud and the tires are just spinning and so much energy is being exerted and over and over and over again and you look around and you're like I don't feel like I've gotten anywhere during this season and, and during those times of discouragement and when fear just can, can you, if you notice that fear just can take over our mind take over our emotions and almost shut us down and make us uh, fear things that are in front of us and create all these scenarios in our mind and it just begins to take over. And during those times, we have to remember who God is. And so that's my goal today. And I believe that's what these few, this section in John really illustrates for us to really understand. So I'm going to read verses 1 through 14. You guys still with me? Say amen. Type amen in there. Give me a little thumbs up. A little, maybe a wave emoji, you know, hey, in there. But we're going to start in verse 1, and uh, we're going to just continue on. It says here, John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You need to highlight, underline that. We're coming back to all this. But it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. 
He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. Verse 12, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Last verse here. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth. And we see this beautiful, I mean, amen, right? What if I could just read that text and I'm out, right? Like I just walk, because that text is so powerful. It's so real. And I, I read that and I read it again. And there's something about it just leaped in my spirit as I continued to read it over and over again. I would encourage you to maybe to go back this week and just read this again as we talk about it. But John gives us a few things. If you're taking notes about who Jesus is, he starts out in the beginning. He says, in the beginning, at the, almost like you would read in Genesis. In the beginning was the Word. And when he's talking about the Word, later in chapter 1, he's, you see he synonymously takes the Word and supplements that with Jesus. And he's talking about Jesus here and the Word, the message in the flesh and the, the spoken Word there. He, he's bringing that interchangeably as he's talking about Jesus here. And so every time you see the Word, the word, word, he's talking about Jesus. So in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was Jesus. And the word was with God. So Jesus was has always existed with God. He's eternal. And then he says he was with God in the beginning uh, through all of this. And then he said the word was God. Jesus is is God. I know many of you, that's not a shocking statement, but for us to remember who Jesus is. Jesus is God. He always existed with God. He is the creator of all things. And then he goes on to say, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So through Jesus... We see that he is our creator, that we have God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit that dwells inside each and every believer, that a part of the Trinity, that Jesus is a part of all of that creation, and in fact, through him. And then he says something so powerful. It says, in him was life, and the life that was the light of men. And I just want to sit here for a second that Jesus is life. We, we see this in John 14. He talks about I'm the way, the truth, and the life, right? And he says that I give life. Not only, he's talking about one aspect. He says uh, here physically that through Jesus, everything was created. So physically he gives life. It is his breath that speaks through us. It is his breath in our lungs. He spoke and mountains were in existence. So through Jesus, physically he gives life, but also spiritually. We know that it is through Jesus and only through Jesus that we receive salvation, that we were walking in darkness, we were walking in sin, and we were left to our own vices. We were separated from God and, and walking in our disobedience, and we were dead in our sins. And Jesus came and pulled us out from the very bottom, dead in our sin, and breathed life into us. And those who believe and place their faith in him, and spiritually we are a a new creation in Christ that we receive this life, this hope through Jesus. Now, isn't that so good? Isn't that so that we're, we're not, we're just in the first couple of verses here and we're reminded of who we worship. We're reminded of who Jesus is. John kicks this book off in such a powerful way to remind us that who I have given my life to, who I am serving, who I am following. And he's saying that is who you and I are worshiping to. And we're singing songs and we're praising God. God, and we're lifting our hands, and we're crying out, that is who we are worshiping. When we feel discouraged, and we feel like the weight that is in front of us is insurmountable, and we cannot make it through, we have to remember who is Jesus. We have to remember that he, he breathed life into existence, and that he provided and gave us a new life in him. 
And this powerful thing allows us to see. And then he says this, in him was life and the life was the light of men. In verse five, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus is the light. He is the light of man. There is a light placed in us that has given us life. And then this is a, a beautiful illustration of saying there is light and there is darkness. There is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of evil and the kingdom of sin and our flesh and our uh, our evil desires and all those things that we feel like maybe darkness is coming around us. But John reminds us who is in control, who is in, who is in charge and who is, has a complete authority. And he is saying the darkness has not overcome it. In fact, the light shines in the darkness. And I love in science how darkness is the absence of light. And Jesus comes, and then when the presence, which he is the source of light, and he walks in, the darkness disperses because he has all power and authority over darkness, over sin, over shame, over guilt, over hatred, over all these things that bring about darkness. And we're living in the, the pieces of a dark world of divisiveness and a broken world, but Jesus says, hey, I have come to be a light, to shine a light on those very things. And, and Jesus even steps back and he says, it's not a time to run away fearful of the darkness. In fact, the way that you can move in dispersed darkness is bringing the light. Jesus is the light by bringing Jesus into the darkness, walking into the darkness and believing that. In fact, Jesus reminds us this in Matthew chapter 5. You guys still with me? Saying amen in there? Y'all get me riled up. I'm getting excited in here. Okay, I'm going to just preach to, you know, a couple people on the cameras, but I can already feel like um, God wants to, to preach through this. And so Matthew chapter 5, Jesus is, is teaching his disciples. And it's who we are called to be like. And Jesus is teaching his disciples. And he is saying, hey, well, I want you to follow me. Be more, uh, help me to change you into uh, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, as we talked about. And then he says here in Matthew chapter 5, if you went through the Beatitudes, uh, he teaches through all that, a beautiful teaching by Jesus. And then he gets to the kind of lower part here in Matthew chapter 5, and he says this in verse 15 and 16. It says, nor, he's he calls his people and says, hey, I want you to be a light. I am the light. I'm living in you. Now I want you to be a light. Because then he says, 15, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to the all in the house. And in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So another thing, if you want to take notes here, that we don't run from the darkness, we, but we bring light into it. You and I are willing and, and saying we can walk into that with the light of Christ, shining his grace, shining his truth, shining his love into those situations, into our world, because we have the light of Christ who is in us. And we're allowing his light to shine through us. And we're not trying to hide it. He said, don't, don't hide it like underneath a, a, a basket so that nobody can see the hope of glory, but let his light shine. And then he even gives us something specific. He says, let your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And that's why I love our mission here is connect people to Jesus daily. We're giving God glory. We're saying, look what Jesus did. Look what God did through our church. Look what God did through my life. Look what God is doing right here through this and in this situation. And, and Bible and Romans, it even reiterates, how do you overcome evil but by doing good? And he says this, by our good works, let this leak out of us as the light of the world. You have a light inside of you. I have a light inside of me that we don't need to hide, but to allow God to use it and to use us for his glory. 
And then we see, uh, he goes right into an example of this. He says, there is a man named, uh, a man named John who was going to come. And not the same John that's writing this, but in fact, this is John the Baptist, who is the cousin of Jesus. And if you read in scripture, they were uh, born around the same time, but he had a specific mission as to pave the way to be a voice in the wilderness. He's fulfilling some of those prophecies, a voice in the wilderness to pave the way to get people's hearts and minds ready to receive. The, the Messiah, Jesus, who is coming. But he says, John, he is not the light. And this is what John tells us here, uh, the disciple John. He tells us, he says that John the Baptist is not the light, but he's pointing us to the light. And his job is to bear a witness. It's to be, a, you and I are called to be the same. We are called to be a witness. And for us, what is a prerequisite of a witness? You have to witness something, right? Like you have to see, you have to be there. You have to know who God is and how he has changed your life and how you've started to follow him. And now you and I get to step back into a dark world and going, hey, I was in darkness too. I, I was following my own desires my, and I was wrapped up in my sin and hurt and shame and guilt and I had nowhere to go. I felt alone and then I met Jesus and he changed my life. He redeemed me. He saved me. He pulled me out and gave me a new life, a new hope, a new identity. And this is what Jesus did. And we bear witness to those who are around us. So many times in my life after coming to know Christ, my own personal story and testimony comes into play as I'm talking with people and so many times, even planning this church, people may come about and say, you know, I'm, I'm going through this. I, I feel alone. We don't know anybody. I'm having this struggle in my life. And all those moments are opportunities that God has placed before us that somebody may feel like they're in the darkness. And you and I get to, to walk into that and to bear witness going, look, I, I, I was there one time in my life, too. And this is what I did. I, I don't know about you, but I, when I gave my life to Jesus, he began to work in that area of my life. He, he began to help me. And this is what I did. I, I was reading this scripture and I was attending this church. And, you know, and all of a sudden I'm just bearing witness to what God did in and through me. And now I'm sharing light with them so that they can experience this. They can be introduced and connected to who is life. And his name is Jesus. And it's so powerful for you and I to live this way because the who is so the who is life changing? Who we worship is Jesus, and when Jesus is involved, everything can change. And when Jesus is involved, life and hope and love and grace and truth come to the table. And as I get ready to close, I was preparing and praying over this message, and I was reminded of a story in Mark chapter four. And in fact, in Mark chapter 4, we see uh, the same story that Jesus was teaching about being the light of the world. And so he gets done teaching all of that, the same part of text that Matthew just told us about, Matthew chapter 5. And then in Matthew chapter 4, he gets done teaching all that. And then all the disciples, uh, they get together, they get into the boat, and they're going to cross the sea to try to go to a new area uh, uh, to do more ministry. And by now, it is evening time. So they've been teaching all day, and they get into the boat, and the sun is beginning to set. And they're climbing this boat. I just picture, you know, just like uh, out here, if you go out on May River, you get to watch that sunset come down. The water's crystal clear. You're like, ooh, this is a good night. You know, just those moments, those, those uh, fishermen on there. Remember, some of these guys are uh, generational fishermen. They have had this passed down. They've basically lived on the water and how they made their income. Then you got some guys like Luke who are a doctor and um, who are very uh, educated. You got Matthew, the tax collector, those different guys. They're mixed in on this boat. And so they climb into this boat and they're going over. So then nightfall comes and all of a sudden this storm comes rolling in. A storm. Matter of fact, Jesus, who knows all things, says, hey, let's get in the boat. And they go out into the sea and Jesus, is, uh, his body is tired because he's 100 percent man, 100 percent God. And he falls asleep at the helm of the boat. And so he's he's hanging out there. And I want to read this to you uh, in verses 37 through 41. I just want to tell you the whole thing. I want you to see what scripture says here in verse 37. You guys still with me? 
He says here, And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. So the waves are crashing so much that the water's coming in the boat. But he was in the stern, asleep, on the cushion. Come on, Jesus. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who is this? I love that. Who? Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I, I picture myself in this story. I love to hop in scripture and really just get the full grasp, uh, grasp that's not even a word, the full grasp of the, what's happening here and to really understand the waves are crashing into this boat and the professional fishermen are scared for their life. They think they're going to die. They think this is it. This is the end. The waves are so high. The wind is coming so hard. Our boat is about to go over. We're going to drown right here in the sea. Jesus told us, come follow us. This was supposed to be a different story, but yet you're leading us right here and we're not even going to make it. And it says, the scripture says that fear came over them. And how many times I know I have felt like that, that I'm facing something in life, that, that the fear is crippling, that I don't even know if there's a way out. Where it, that may be for you, whatever's in front of you, there's something you have maybe never faced before. And the fear is so powerful in your mind that you can't think about anything else that's dominating your mind. Maybe even for you, it's caused you to have like uh, de uh, depressed thoughts and all these different things because it's completely taken over. Maybe you're facing something in your marriage you've never faced before. Maybe with your kids, you're facing something through that relationship relationship that has just brought this deep sense of fear over what is in front of you. And you're wrestling through this and you're looking around going, I, I don't know if there's a way out. I, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. What do I need to do? And the disciples in, in that moment, they stop and they say, teacher, they go over there because Jesus is asleep in this storm where they think they're going to die. It's so powerful. And they walk, they're shaking, shaking. Jesus, teacher, teacher, wake up. We don't want to die. And Jesus, I just want wonder if he's like, oh, whoa, what's going on? Oh, it's a little windy out here, huh? We got some waves coming over. Like, whoo. Jesus wakes up. He stands up and says, peace, be still. Imagine Jesus standing up right there in the flesh with these people. He cries out with a voice, peace, be still and calmness. The sea, the rain stops, the clouds part, the ocean or the sea begins to become level again. And all of a sudden, the disciples draw back. And I can just believe the air was sucked out of the boat and they're standing there drenching wet, thinking there was no way out, thinking this was all over. And yet they realized who was in the boat and his name was Jesus. And because Jesus was in the boat, everything changed. He said, peace, be still. And the waves stopped and the rain fell. And the, the disciples stopped. And the Bible teaches the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. And the disciples stopped. And in that moment, they fear, deep fear. Who is this man who can calm the waves, who, we, the waves and calm the storm? Who is this man? And you and I need to remember who we are serving, who is with us, who is right there in our home, in our families, who is living in and through us. It is the light of the world. It is the life. It is Jesus who is saying that when I come into that peace, be still. Allow that to stir inside of our soul and stir inside of our hearts of saying that allow me to work in this. Allow me to work in the situation. It may feel like there's no way out, but I want you to know that Jesus wants to be involved in whatever Ever you're in, and you and I can surrender that to him, Jesus, who is life, the creator of all things. He is the word right there in the flesh and the glory of God right before us. And Jesus is saying, trust me with that, what's going on in you, because I want to breathe peace. I want to breathe life into that. I, I want to walk 
with you through this. And just to be reminded of who Jesus is. And I, I'm going to get ready to close. I'm going to give you three quick things, three quick things from John chapter 1. Because I believe Jesus is the light for you and I. I believe he is the light for marriages. He is the light for our relationships, the light for our kids, the light for our country, the light for what is in front of us today. In verse 14, it's a pretty powerful, and we're going to pull three things from verse 14 that you and I can walk away with in, in order to be the light that God is calling us to be. And I want to remind us here in verse 14, it says, In the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as the only Son, the Father, full of grace and truth. The first thing I want us to see here is that we are called to live a sent life, a sent life. Jesus, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He is perfect. He is sinless. He lived in heaven from the, the all of time. He is there, but yet he left heaven and dwelt among us who are sinful and dead in our sin. Jesus walked into that darkness as the life, as the light and he lived a sent life of saying I, I want you to receive this and he and he allowed that to happen and you and I we do not stray from but we can step into those situations because we fear God and honor and all of who he is and saying God use me for your glory to be a witness to who is the way who is the truth who is the life that we are to live a sent life that you have so much purpose now that on Monday when you walk into work and in your family and in your household, we can direct people to the life. We can direct people to the light and his name is Jesus in his ways. And then the second thing is, is look to Jesus. First one is live a sent life. Second one is look to Jesus. He says, uh, we have seen his glory. Glory as the only son from the father is saying, look, you have seen the glory of God because you have seen Jesus. And in his scripture, and in his text, it's almost like I wish, you know, God would put a writing in the sky. I wish he would just make it abundantly clear that, that he is God. And he did. He sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. And he gave us this scripture and these witnesses that saw that and all these prophecies that he began to show us. But in the moments when the fear is trying to take over, discouragement is trying to take over. We need to look to Jesus. The disciples fearing for their life, they went to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And sometimes we just need to cry out to him, find ways to remember who he is, to look to Jesus, live a sent life, one, two, look to Jesus. And the third one, it says, Jesus was full of grace and truth, 100% grace and 100% truth. And so many times for us, uh, we can live this way. And so the third thing is love with grace and truth. There can be times where we want to stand on truth, which we should stand on truth. But if we just stand and, and forget about grace, we can become more like the Pharisees who are hanging all of these merits down and going, you got to do this, 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 check this off, behave this way so that you can get closer to God. So, so behave this way so you can get in our club. But God is saying, don't forget about grace. And, but some of us, we can stand all on the grace side and forget about the, the truth side. And we allow anything and everything to happen. And, but we got to remember that there is truth. There is God's way. There are his commands that he's called his creation to follow. And so for us to remember both grace and truth, to, to stand on the word of God and what he's called us to do, but also be patient the way that he has been patient with us free and undeserved love as God calls us to love our enemies, love those who are not like us, to be willing to uh, be there for those who maybe have never experienced this kind of love before, who are living in darkness. But you and I are called to be the light. My prayer is that we as the Bridge Church, 
wherever you may be listening to this online, that we live a sent life, that we have a purpose. You have the light of the world living in and through you as a Christian. And then we look to Jesus. We remember who he is. And we remember he is walking with us. And then lastly, we were loving with grace and truth. And every conversation we're having, every person we interact with as we live a sent life, I believe God wants to see, and God is is moving and working in and through this, I believe, with every ounce of my being that we can see a revival break loose, but it happens when his people, he says in his word, that when my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and come together. He said, I will heal their land for you and I to look to Jesus and live in a way that he has called us to live. I, I believe, church, that the time is now that God wants to use us in incredible ways right now, not in months to come. He wants to work in your situation right now. And I believe that you and I must surrender our lives to him. So as I pray for you today, pray for us today, I want to remind you of verse 12 here. It says, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You can give your life to Christ today. You can, you can, maybe you heard for the first time who Jesus is. And you're saying, I, I'm ready to give my life. I realize I'm dead in my sin. I need to give my life that Jesus is the only way. I'm ready to give my life to him. You can receive that today. And so we're going to pray together. And uh, during this prayer, it's really the posture of your heart. This just gives you an opportunity to reach out and to pray to him to understand the full gospel of what Jesus has brought to us. But if you've never prayed to receive Christ, just uh, you, you just may want to follow my lead here and pray something like this. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm dead in my sin. I give you my life, Jesus. I believe that you... Uh, came to this earth, God. I believe that you created all things. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you rose again. Jesus, I ask that you save me and change me and that you continue to breathe life and purpose into my life, God. If you prayed that prayer today, we have a, a number we'd love for you to text. Just simply pull your phone out, throw that number on the screen there. Or we're gonna put it in the comments as well and in the description above. And just, just text us, let us know. Say, hey, I, I prayed to receive Christ because we want to pray for you. We, I, I'd love to pray specifically by name. Maybe you need prayer. I, I would love for you to, let's lean into what you are facing that's causing fear. Text that in. Let, let's pray about it. Let's get our church to pray in and through that for you as we walk together. I'm going to pray for us. Uh, and then we got a couple just uh, quick announcements uh, before we leave today. But let's pray together as a church. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your power, God. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. God, you said that you come because you love the world, that you sent your one and only son. God, and I pray that we would lean into that. God, I pray that you would uh, help us to live a sent life. I pray that you remind us to look to you, God. I pray that we love with grace and truth every single day, God. I pray that you breathe life and hope into us. I pray that we will humbly come before you in prayer, God, as we look to you, that we see revival happen. We see that you change our hearts first, God. If there's anything in us that you need to change, that we need to surrender to you, that you uh, want us to get rid of, God, anything in our flesh just trying to rise up. I pray that the Spirit would just take heed in our heart and our lives and in everything around us, God. I, I pray that we uh, see light and because we know that your light overcomes the darkness around us, God. And I pray that we rest in that. And we ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Thank you for joining us today. We are thankful that you are here, and we're grateful that you're here. Um, we, we hope that you took something from the message today. There was some encouragement for you that you can take into your daily routines with you. Uh, before we leave, I have a few announcements. One being offering. Obviously, there is plenty of ways for you to continue giving. Um, we want to ask that you can text. Uh, we uh, have it online, and you can also um, see the links here on the page. Uh, next week, we're going to be starting a new series called The Power. 
power of love. Uh, we don't want you to miss out on that, but we want to just take this opportunity to talk about how we can show more love to our communities um, and be the hands and feet of Jesus and just love our neighbors. Um, not only that, for those of you who have children, we have VBS. I know we announced it last week, and um, we want to encourage you to uh, sign your children up. Please reach out to us, to us. If you have any questions, Jamie is going to be available for you, so please reach out. We're, we're willing to hear you, and we want to talk with you, and we want you to be a part of our VBS this year. Furthermore, for those of you during this time, um, we've all been in quarantine. We've been kind of kept away from each other, but we want you to know if you've made the decision to follow Jesus, and maybe you haven't taken those next steps, we are going to be trying to do some baptisms soon. Uh, we don't have exact dates, but we want you to get connected to that. We want to navigate through that with you and um, just walk side by side with you. So if you are interested in taking those next steps from uh, accepting Jesus and then being baptized, please, there's a link here on the bottom of the page. Sign that link. Um, there's a couple of different things or a couple of different ways that we can get you connected to that. And we'll be giving more information as that comes up. But please feel free to reach out. Outside of that, we are looking forward to seeing you again soon next week. Uh, have a wonderful week. Go and be the hands of uh, Jesus and show everyone love. Thank you.